Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome fingerstyle lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, in which we'll discuss the most important and yet most misunderstood fingerstyle skill, which is filling in empty spaces. Whether you're playing a fingerstyle arrangement or improvising your own piece, how do you fill in those pesky empty spaces between the melody notes? There's a melody, there's a chord, there's a bass note, and then there's the silence between the melody notes, you know, what's in the background. How do you create that background? The straight answer would be you arpeggiate the chord, but that still doesn't give you a real answer because there are many types of arpeggios which create different atmospheres and different rhythms. Which one do you pick every time? And the straight answer to that would be you don't. You don't think about the arpeggios you want to do. You just let your fingers flow. And this is what this lesson is all about. I want to teach you how to let your fingers flow and fill in those spaces intuitively. Right? And for that, we're going to use E minor because we can just play strings one, two, three, and six, okay? And use this, uh, this hand, all the fingers on this hand, not just one finger, um, to experiment, right? And I want you to just take a few minutes, even one minute would do, to just uh, fool around, okay, and create. Right? As many different um, combinations of strings one, two, three, and six you can think of. Don't just play okay, up and down the guitar. Mix it up. Play strings two, six, three, six, one, two, one, six. Okay, something like this. Try different approaches. Surprise yourself. Challenge yourself. Okay, that would come in handy when we actually start adding melody notes. So just try as many different combinations as you can just surprise yourself with. Okay, I'm saying surprise yourself because most of us are used to patterns. And this is what I want to break first. Okay, break your patterns. Okay, play notes together. Okay, surprise yourself with the bass note. Just don't, don't just uh, settle for the beats. Okay, um, play the same note twice. Once you can do that, start adding melody notes. Now, before we even use the E minor scale, I wanted to try a chromatic melody. Strings, um, sorry, um, frets one, two, three, and four on the second string. Okay? And I want you to try to create a melody out of that. Again, surprise yourself. Create as many combinations as you can. And then start adding strings one and three to the mix. Okay? This might be a little bit confusing, and I'm even getting confused myself because, again, I haven't settled on anything pre written. I want to surprise myself just as you have to surprise yourself, okay? And if I, what I'm playing is too complicated for you, don't try to play what I play, okay? I'm surprising myself, you surprise yourself in your own way, okay? You can also play notes together. I'm playing strings one and two together, two and three together, but every time I play a note, I play an extra note right after I play it. Okay? Okay, even two notes. I play strings uh, one and three and then keep playing the second string on, on frets zero to four. 
Okay? I'm not playing the fifth fret because the fifth fret is the open E string. It's the same note, but you can use that as an effect if you want to vibrate the second string on five while playing the open E string. Okay? And then you get this interesting sound. feel confident enough, start adding embellishments like slides, hammer-ons, pull-offs, hammer-ons and pull-offs. Okay? Now what I want you to learn from this exercise, okay, the most important thing is that you can use the thumb as an extra note. You can use the bass note as an interim note to fill in the spaces as well. You don't have to save the bass note for the beats alone. Okay? You, can, um, you can put on the chord, if you like, and then you can use strings four and five. Okay? But um, let's save that for later. Okay? Let's just... Um that exercise until we're fed up with it. Okay? So uh, that's your first exercise. The second exercise would be to start creating melodies on, on the first string on 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, and 12, which is the E minor scale. Again, very simple melodies and just let yourself flow. Let your fingers arpeggiate the chord, okay, strings 2 and 3, in any way they see fit. Okay, the most important thing to remember is even if you don't want to arpeggiate, at least play one extra note. Okay, just one. Okay, and then just um, experiment with giving it more space. Okay, start with short distances. Okay, get used to playing that extra second string. Okay, then play the third. Okay, then play the second and the third. Okay, and then give yourself more space. Okay, and work your way up to shorter melodies and more background. Okay, that's the way to do it. And you'll find that the more you try, the better you get at it. And then you can start playing different chords. Okay, for example, C. Okay, and you can play... See? Arpeggios with... Okay, one, three on the second string and the open E string. And you can just hammer it on. Okay, hammer on the one, two, three. And you can also play... Okay, one pull off to zero if you like. Okay, and again, play around with the spaces you have to fill. Okay, short spaces. Okay, with longer spaces, every few notes. Short, 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 long, short, long. Again, challenge yourself with very, very simple melodies at first. You don't have to get all complicated right off the bat. And when you feel you're ready for the next step, try to play different chords. Okay, C, G, A minor, F. same notes, 1, 3, 0 on the 2nd string and the open E string, or whichever note I have on, okay, 3 for G, 1 for F, I'm not even thinking about it. All I'm thinking is short melodies, 
and letting my fingers fill in the rest. And I'm just well versed in it, so I'm used to playing different patterns. And I'm used to challenging myself to not repeat the pattern I just played. Okay, and that's where I want you to be. And this is why I made this lesson. So before you go, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, okay? Everything is for free here on Lick and Riff. But if you wanna give something back, you can uh, go to Patreon. The link is in the description. You can pledge whatever you want to give back. Everything goes right back into Lick and Riff to your guitar education. And I thank you very much for your generosity. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now, enjoy.